Welcome to Edu Access, your gateway to making science simple, fun, and unforgettable. Have you ever stopped to think about how everything around us is either moving or staying still? From a tiny ant marching on the ground to the giant planet spinning in space, the world is full of motion. Understanding it is the first step to understanding the universe. Today, we're going to unlock the secrets behind these everyday observations. We'll be diving into three fundamental concepts from your class six science textbook. First, we'll learn the scientific way to describe the position of any object. Second, we'll explore the core ideas of what it means for something to be in motion or at rest. And finally, we'll journey through the different types of motion we see all around us in our daily lives. Ready to get started? Let's begin. Imagine someone visits your school for the first time. They walk up to you and ask a simple question. Where is the library? You might say it's over there and point, but that's not very specific, is it? To give a clear answer, you need to relate the library's location to something else that is well known and easy to find. In science, to describe the position of an object accurately, we use something called a reference point. A reference point is a fixed place or object that we use as a starting point for our description. The key word here is fixed. It means it doesn't move. A tree, a building, or the main gate are all great reference points. A moving car? Not so much because its own position is constantly changing. So using the main gate as our reference point, you could say the library is 50 meters to the right of the main gate. Now that's a perfect description. The visitor knows exactly where to go. We use reference points all the time without even thinking about it. For example, the garden is behind the school building. Here, the school building is the reference point. The water tank is on top of the house. The house is the reference point. On highways, you see signs that say, Guwahati, five kilometers. This sign tells you your position relative to the city of Guwahati, which is the reference point. Now for a quick activity. Pause the video and look around your room. First, describe the position of your desk using the door as a reference point. For example, my desk is five steps away from the door. Now, try it again, but this time, use the teacher's table as the reference point. You might say, my desk is in the first row, right in front of the teacher's table. See how the description changes with the reference point? Great! Now that we know how to describe where something is, let's talk about what happens when its position changes. This brings us to the concepts of motion and rest. An object is said to be in motion if its position changes with the passage of time relative to a reference point. Think about a bird flying across the sky. Its position is constantly changing compared to the ground, which is our reference point. On the other hand, an object is at rest if its position does not change with time relative to that same reference point. A book lying on your table stays in the exact same spot for hours unless someone moves it. It is at rest. Let's look at some more examples. A parked car is at rest relative to the house it's parked next to. But when the driver starts it and drives away, the same car is now in motion. A fan that is switched off is at rest. But the moment you flip the switch, its blades are in motion. Now here's a really interesting idea. Motion and rest are relative. What does that mean? It means an object can be in motion and at rest at the same time, depending on your point of view. Let's go back to our bus example. If you are sitting in a moving bus and you look at the person sitting next to you, they aren't moving, are they? Relative to you and your seat, that person is at rest. But what if someone is standing on the sidewalk watching your bus go by? To them, both you and the person next to you are in motion, moving along with the bus. So, are you at rest or in motion? The answer depends entirely on the reference point. You are at rest relative to the bus, but in motion relative to the trees outside. Think bigger. Right now, you might be sitting still in a chair feeling at rest, but the earth is constantly spinning and hurtling through space around the sun. So, relative to the sun, you are in motion at an incredible speed. Amazing isn't it? Now that we understand motion, let's explore its many forms. Motion isn't just one single thing. It comes in different flavors. 
Let's explore the main types. First up is rectilinear motion. This is the simplest type of motion, moving in a straight line. Think of a train speeding along a straight track, an apple falling directly to the ground, or a sprinter running the 100 meter dash. All of these are examples of rectilinear motion. Next, we have circular motion. This is when an object moves along a circular path around a fixed central point. A classic example is the movement of the hands of a clock. They move in a circle around the center of the clock. Another example is a satellite orbiting the Earth. Now, this is often confused with circular motion, but it's different, rotational motion. This happens when an object spins or turns about an imaginary line called an axis, which passes through the object itself. A spinning top is a perfect example of rotational motion. The Earth rotating on its axis, which causes day and night, is also rotational motion. Then there's periodic motion. This is any motion that repeats itself after a fixed interval of time. The key here is the regular, predictable repetition. The swinging of a pendulum is periodic. The movement of a child on a swing is periodic. Even the Earth's revolution around the sun, which takes one year, is a form of periodic motion. A special kind of periodic motion is oscillatory motion. This describes the back and forth or to and fro movement of an object about a central or mean position. The swing we just mentioned is a great example. The vibrations of a guitar string after it's plucked are also oscillatory motion. All oscillatory motions are periodic, but not all periodic motions are oscillatory. Finally, in the real world, objects rarely have just one type of motion. Most often, they exhibit mixed motion, which is a combination of two or more types of motion. The wheel of a moving bicycle is the perfect example. The wheel as a whole moves forward in a straight line. That's rectilinear motion. At the same time, it's spinning on its axle. That's rotational motion. What a brilliant combination. Phew, that was a lot, but you did great. Let's quickly recap what we learned today. First, we learned that to describe an object's position accurately, we must use a fixed reference point. Second, we defined motion as a change in position with time and rest as no change in position. We also discovered the mind-bending idea that motion and rest are relative to the observer. And third, we explored the fascinating world of motion types, including straight line, rectilinear, path following circular, spinning rotational, repeating periodic, back and forth oscillatory, and the all-in-one mixed motion. Thanks for watching this episode of EduAccess. We hope we've set your curiosity in motion. If you found this lesson helpful and want to see more science made simple, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a lesson. In our next video, we'll take our understanding a step further. Now that you know what motion is, we'll learn how to measure it by exploring the concepts of speed and uniform and non-uniform motion. Until then, keep asking questions, keep exploring, and stay curious.